So before we talk about canine or dog enrichment, I would like to talk with you about animal enrichment and where this all comes from. So animal enrichment is, in a nutshell, and um, you can read up more on wildwelfare.org, um, where I got this from, is choice, change and create. So we do want to provide animals with more choice so they feel more in control. And you can um, learn more about this in the chapter about agency. Um, we also want to provide um, and create variety to prevent boredom and frustration. So we want to add a level of change or an element of change to our dog's lives or animal's lives. And very often these like boredom and frustration are pretty big, um, if not the biggest, indicators when we identify destructive behavior or have um, behavior we do not appreciate, then the root cause very often can be frustration or boredom, um, simply because our dogs or our animals, and this is um, obviously transferable to other animals too, find ways to enrich their own lives, which is very often not how we would um, ideally like them to enrich their lives. So for a dog, this could be um, chewing the sofa, the cushions, your shoes, or whatever it might be, um, rather than chewing something appropriate, which we haven't provided them with. Then we have create, and this means to increase the complexity of environment, um, to address species-specific needs. And this is mainly in the chapter of environmental enrichment, Coming from animal enrichment background, this is very often relating to, um, you know, the habitat within a zoo or anything where you, um, or you can transfer it to a shelter environment if you have a dog in a kennel, where they are basically in one room um, without much human interaction, without necessarily um, having a doggy companion around, but having a very stressful time with loads of people popping by, loud environments, everyone is stressed out, um, loads of barking going on, etc. So they would um, relate to this on how to enrich um, the environments to basically, um, yeah, make it more pleasant for the dogs, but also, or any animal really, um, to, um, yeah, have a better time there. However, we can also, and we will also look into this, on how you can enrich your dog's life when they are a happy pooch who is living in a happy home. So to basically just look into your dog's um, environment and how we can improve or enrich this. So this one is also adapted from wildfair.org and this gives us a pretty good indication as well. So we had um, change, choice and create and now we're just looking at what, why and when. And in a nutshell this is all you need <laughs> but of course we're going to talk about this in a bit more detail. So uh, when it comes to animal enrichment obviously dogs are included in this too. Um, however, there's, of course, a lot of things already researched for you, so you don't really have to do much yourself. Just put it together in a nice plan and just execute. <laughs> so what, um, yeah, so when we are looking at enrichment, we want to look at what would be enriching. So we are going to look at animals who are living in the wild or like their companions who are in the wild and check how much time and energy would this animal spend on a certain behavior. And this gives us a good indicator of what would actually be enriching for this animal. Yeah, so with uh, dogs, this could be, um, two of my dogs are actually street dogs, so they have lived in the wild. They are feral dogs, um, well, they were feral dogs before they um, came to me. Um, but this would be something where they can, you know, where this gives you quite a good indication of how would they have lived. Or very often people would say wolves. Um, as well as, you know, just looking at um, what were the dogs bred for. So different breeds can have, obviously, um, different behaviors that they would engage in. Then we're going to look at the why. So why does the animal spend that much time and energy on this behavior? Not all behaviors are equally important. So the general rule of thumb is that if a dog or an animal spends more time on an and a behavior and this could be um, looking for food um, or um, you know building shelter or whatever it might be then chances are that this behavior is more rewarding or more ingrained in this animal's um, nature than other behaviors that they only do occasionally so for us this would mean we would want to provide um, them an opportunity to engage in the most important behaviors first and then add on 
the other bits later on but to really make your um, your animal the most happy the quickest um, to just basically provide the biggest chunks first if that makes sense then also when and when refers to when does the animal engage in these behaviors and this means that needs can change depending on the time of the day the age um, season whatever it might be right so if you for example have um, a hamster they might be more active during the night or if you have um, animals who basically sleep during winter time you know their their needs do change very much so they might need um, to engage in finding a food and eating food and um, you know digging up food or whatever um, more like a squirrel before winter time and then they disappear and then they come back so for our dogs this might also be relevant especially of course when it comes to age um, so a puppy has very different needs than a senior or an adolescent dog um, as well as um, health fitness etc but also if you have for example um, a female who is intact when they're in season they might show very different behaviors than when they are not in season etc so we want to look at what why and when so to bring this all back to our dogs so what is the definition or the meaning of canine enrichment or dog enrichment it's basically providing opportunities for our dogs to engage in innate behaviors and what these are we're going to talk about in the next slide um, our dogs can find ways to enrich their lives themselves, often not to appreciate bars. So canine enrichment is all about providing these outlets for physically, emotionally and mentally satisfied, so happier dogs. And I mean, this is all we want to, isn't it? So we do get dogs because we want them to be happy and are happy um, little companions in our lives. So why not give back to our dogs and yeah, give them what they need? So here's a list, um, obviously not a full list, but just um, to give you some examples of what innate doggy behaviors are. And this are things like sniffing, digging, chewing, licking, barking, um, etc. And you will see if you go to the dog park, there are very different type of dogs. So some might crazily dig a hole. Um, others are barking crazily at other dogs because they want them to run. Others are very happy to um, just sniff away and don't really want to engage um, with other dogs, etc. So, um, yeah, you will see very different preferences even in these um, innate doggy behaviors. And we will be talking about um, innate behaviors and how to fulfill them um, over this course. So, there will be um, parts of this in the um, cognitive enrichment uh, bit as well as in the sensory enrichment etc so we will be going back to these um, behaviors um, over time again and again and try to fulfill them and I also have created several lists with over 200 ideas on how to basically engage your dog in these behaviors so there's not really much um, thinking you have to do just really it's a pick and mix and just match it to your dog and pick the ones you really like to give a go and also see which ones your dog finds most rewarding but yeah the hard work is done for you so yeah you basically just um, create a plan and just have some fun together with your dog to see which ones you really like and would like to give a go so to sum up what canine enrichment is i'd like to use the words from ali bender um, she's the author of Canine Enrichment for the Real World, and if you want to dig really deep, then I highly recommend her book, uh, which is also what I partly use to research for this course. So, um, yeah, um, I think it's a really good book. And she says the concept is pretty straightforward of canine enrichment. Learn what your dog's needs are, and we're going to talk about this in a minute <laughs> in detail. And then structure an environment and routine that allows the dog to engage in behaviors they find enriching to truly enrich your dog's life you should offer them opportunities to engage in natural and instinctual behaviors and the key word here is behaviors your dog finds enriching so it can be a bit of a trial and error um, and this is why i have my dogs um, as well included in the course because um, you know <laughs> the benefit of having um, so many dogs as i have before is that 
it shows quite nicely how they do things and um, you know that they are not the same and that even though they are kind of like living in the same environment and some of them are the same breed they still have very different preference and find very different things enriching so yeah it really is about um, you know picking the things um, you think would be um, beneficial for your dog and then matching them to your dog's needs and seeing how your dog actually really likes them or not um, as well as really getting to know your dog and understanding your dog better I hope you're as excited as I am and um, just want to say I'm so glad you're on this course and yeah I'm just really happy to have you here and cannot wait to see the changes you make to your dog's life and um, you know how your dog likes them so please do feel free to you know just send me pictures or give me some feedback because I would really love to see um, how how you know enriching your dog's life would not only change your dog's life but also your relationship to your dog.